Today we have a little bit of detail for Nintendo Switch 2, something that was discovered and discussed from Digital Foundry, so I'm really excited to bring that forward to you guys. We also have some updates on games likely coming from third-party companies over to Nintendo Switch 2, and maybe even an update for our first-party game. We also have a couple stories mixed in here about some big news for Switch today, because obviously Nintendo Switch 2 isn't here yet. It's not probably coming until around holiday next year, so with that in mind, we obviously want to make sure that we're continuing to cover the big stories happening right here with Nintendo Switch and of course hey we have a Pokemon Presents tomorrow so we'll be live streaming that. Now, before we jump into these stories, I just want to remind you that we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and maybe leave a comment down below letting me know what you're most excited about with Nintendo Switch 2, and then on top of that, ringling that ding-a-ling so you can get all notifications on my content. All right, this first story we're diving into deals with some extra details regarding Nintendo Switch 2 coming from the latest Digital Foundry Direct, which was published today. They went ahead and discussed, the three-person group, discussed the details around the Nintendo Switch 2 that were leaked out last week, and they went on to add one new thing in. So while they don't remember the exact specific sizes, Digital Foundry did say that for Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo is massively increasing the capacity of the cartridge sizes. Now, as we discussed you know, just over the weekend, this does go in line with the expected switch over to 3D NAND from 2D NAND. And if you don't remember what that means, 3D NAND basically stacks layers instead of setting them next to each other, which takes up a much less space and is mass produced. In fact, it's been used for about a decade or so in most consumer electronics that are mobile. They also get used in M.2 SSDs and all that stuff. Like it's a very, very popular type of NAND to be used and it does support up to 512 gigabytes per node. Of course, that's not what Nintendo's going to use. I would say it's probably going to be something closer to 64 gigabytes, maybe topping out at 128 for something like Call of Duty, and that's assuming that they can get that 128 gigabyte cartridge to cost around the same as what the 32 gigabyte cartridge costs, because yes, 3D NAND memory is significantly cheaper than 2D NAND because it is mass produced on the you know almost billion level scale just because of how many devices use it. Mobile phones use it, SSDs use it. It's pretty much the industry standard. So yeah, it should be fairly cheap for Nintendo to use much larger capacities. And again, Digital Foundry is the first place to tell us that the plan for Nintendo Switch 2 cartridge sizes is to increase exponentially. So that is really awesome news to just think about in the back of our minds as we're debating on, hey man, even with bigger internal storage, what are we going to do about these cartridge sizes? And while we talked about 3D NAND being a solution, we didn't weren't really sure if they were going to go with massive size cartridges. And they're the first ones to come forward to be like, yeah, that's exactly what Nintendo's going to do. They're going to offer, you know, probably two additional sized cartridges to go well beyond the current 32 gigabyte cartridge that maxes out on Nintendo Switch. And I want to say maxes out, it's not the potential, but Nintendo is not willing to go bigger than that due to cost. Now, this is where we get into our next story, and oh man, we get to talk about Respawn Entertainment and EA. Now, for those who don't know, Respawn Entertainment is responsible for bringing over Apex Legends to Nintendo Switch. So we already have support from this particular studio from EA, but what's really exciting is they were hiring someone for a next generation device that needs to have Nintendo Switch experience. So... Full shout outs, of course, to Doc Trey81. Yet again, the maestro of going through hiring posts. And you'll see that they were hiring a rendering software engineer specifically for Apex Legends. But this actually is going to deal with more than Apex Legends, as we're about to find out. But as we go in here in the hiring post, which by the way, it's been filled, they filled this position. So the really good digging on his part because this isn't even like they're hiring right this second they were hiring and they quickly filled it and it says respawns proprietary game engine propelling it into the future of next generation consoles now of note apex legends has already been ported over the playstation 5 and xbox series x so to hire a new person would suggest that this is for a new system because they say hey we're bringing over apex legends to a new system what's it going to be oh a next generation console that hasn't come out yet 
the Nintendo Switch 2. Now, we know this has to do with Nintendo Switch as well, because in the description for the job requirements, it shows right there at the bottom, Nintendo Switch console programming experience. So they need to have experience specifically with the Nintendo Switch. Note that no other console is listed in the requirements for that experience. So yeah, they clearly want someone who is familiar with the Switch and how it operates because they think it might help them out in programming on the next generation system. Now again, this position has been filled. Now one thing we need to consider in going back to where it talked about propelling it into the future next generation consoles is right next to it, it says for Apex and beyond. This is really interesting to note because Respawn Entertainment isn't just responsible for Apex Legends. They also handle things like Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. So if they're obviously going to bring Apex Legends over to the Nintendo Switch 2, likely running at 60 FPS and higher, uh, you know, just everything, graphics fidelity and frame rates, and obviously, you know, resolution, they're going to be looking into probably bringing Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. Because remember, they said Apex and more. I would think that means those Star Wars games have a high likelihood of coming over to Nintendo Switch 2 fairly early in the Nintendo Switch 2's life. I don't expect it to be there at launch. Maybe Apex Legends is planned to be there at launch. But I do think sometime in 2025, we could see those ports come over as Nintendo Switch 2 becomes much more capable of getting a lot of the modern games. So that obviously speaks really well for other support for potential other EA franchises down the line as well. Now, in our next story here, we got to talk about Metro Prime 4 because Andy Robinson is the gift that keeps on giving. And the more we listen to his podcast, and I've listened through it over a dozen times, and I somehow miss this. So I want to make sure I give full credit over to Andres Restart, who is really the only person online, I think, that noticed that Andy Robinson actually said this because... Look, we've been waiting for updates on Metroid Prime 4 forever, and th this is finally one that we can maybe sink our teeth into a little bit. And he says it about 5 minutes and 55 seconds or so into his podcast, which we'll have linked down below. And he stated that he heard that Metroid Prime 4 is the last big game for Switch. Now, there's a caveat to this. He hasn't had enough sources on it to feel 100% confident and that's why he hasn't made a report and blew up the internet with making Metroid Prime 4 trending because, again, he doesn't have enough sources to go into a report, but he does have enough to be like, hey, there are talks from people at Nintendo that this is the last big game for Switch. Now, there's a lot of avenues we can go down this. Does this mean cross-gen's off the table? What does big game even mean? Because Andy Robinson, of course, said there really wasn't a big game coming after Tears of the Kingdom this year, and he never really backed off of those remarks, suggesting that while Mario Wonder is great, it's not necessarily on the level of a Tears of the Kingdom. And then you think of next year, well, look, we have you know Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, coming with some sort of revised visuals. We also have the Peach game. And then the only other game currently announced is Metro Prime 4, which we don't know when it's coming. But, you know, Metro Prime 4 is probably getting a AAA game treatment. So, well, obviously not on the level of popularity as Tears of the Kingdom. It is probably on that level of potential AAA budget as a Tears of the Kingdom. So it will be very interesting to see how well Metro Prime 4 could perform, especially if they make it a Switch exclusive and pull... A Sony, if you think about Sony with PlayStation 4, they ended the PlayStation 4's final year right before PlayStation 5 came out with The Last of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. So maybe Nintendo has a plan here to drop Metroid Prime 4 as sort of a last hurrah for Switch, like we got the last hurrah of Paper Mario Color Splash on Wii U, and they're going to hopefully use that to maintain momentum as they head into launch. And yeah, they'll probably eventually be a Switch 2 version of Metroid Prime 4. Also, if there's backwards compatibility, it's far less of a concern that they would drop this exclusively, quote-unquote exclusively, on Nintendo Switch. Now, speaking of games coming to Switch and coming to Nintendo Switch 2, we need to talk about something that was just announced today, and that is the fact that Red Dead Redemption is heading to Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 and not PC. I don't know why they keep avoiding PC. I'm really sorry, you PC gamers. But somehow Switch is getting it before you. I don't get it. This is like a 2010 game. I, 
it's whatever. It's coming out on August 17th. It's going to be digital only. And yeah, you can go ahead and wish list it and all this stuff. And it looks pretty good. And Rockstar Games officially announces. But what was interesting, of course, is this little post by this guy named Chris Klippel, who is an insider. And he noted the Switch version is going to be 720p and 30 FPS uh, in handheld mode. You're going to have it at 1080p and 30 FPS in uh, docked mode, TV mode. And what's really interesting is that the PlayStation 4 version is pretty much the same, except obviously the PS4 Pro will go up to 4K, and the PS5 version, which is just going to be through backwards compatibility, will do 4K and 30 FPS as well. Uh, it's going to cost 50 bucks. It's 30 FPS. Really, really interesting. We already got a smidge of a look at the Switch version because there was a trailer today, and honestly, I'm really excited about the prospects of Red Dead Redemption coming over. But what's really interesting about this is if Red Dead Redemption is coming to Switch right now, is Red Dead Redemption 2 coming over to Nintendo Switch 2. Now, you might argue, who cares about another, you know, PS4 port over to a Nintendo platform, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is still a widely played game today, and it does happen to include a multiplayer mode that is still supported. So I could argue it still would be a pretty big deal to bring it over in the way that I felt like they should have brought Grand Theft Auto 5 over to Nintendo Switch, but they decided not to do that. I think this is a really great sign, of course, for future Rockstar support and it makes you wonder again we don't know but it makes you curious if they're planning on bringing grand theft auto 6 to nintendo switch 2 now that would be a massive get for nintendo's new platform Next up, we have to talk about this report over here at comicbook.com where it says square enix is moving more towards triple a games and this is a big story, especially for Nintendo Switch 2. Over the last few years, Square Enix has offered a fairly diverse lineup of games with a focus on major releases like Final Fantasy uh, you know, 16, as well as smaller options like Octopath Traveler 2. Don't forget Live Alive and Triangle Strategy and so many others. Life is Strange, as an example. However, it seems that the publisher will be shifting focus over the next few years, putting less emphasis on mid-sized titles and more on larger AAA console games. And that comes from the MST Financial's David Gibson. Now, the interesting part about this, of course, is that David Gibson actually deleted all of his tweets on this except for one and the one doesn't talk about this so i did reach out to david gibson for comment unfortunately at the time of recording and publication he hasn't given me a response even though he does follow me i will probably get a comment from him later in this week and i will update you guys on this story but if this is true it is pretty sad to see that they're going to focus basically on final fantasy dragon quest kingdom hearts and then just random new triple a ips that they throw out there such as well i don't know forespoken foam stars those are both triple a level ips as well and less on octopath travelers and triangle strategies and live alive which those sort of games thrived and actually sold pretty decent so it would be strange to see this huge shift from square you used to be like actually we're going to focus more on that triple a game space now i Look, this is what Capcom did, and to be fair to Capcom, it did work. Abandoning those mid-tier games, focusing more on the major stuff, really helped turn Capcom around when they were struggling. So maybe Square Enix has been making this play for a while, and even though Forspoken maybe didn't work out for them, Foam Stars looks like it's doing all right. Maybe this is one of those things where they think this will help make their company massively successful moving forward as well. Again, I hate to see this abandonment, so I hope to get further clarification from David Gibson. And if you're wondering who David Gibson is, he is an analyst that ends up attending all of these meetings, all of these financial calls, and that's why we get a lot of our information from him. Again, I have no idea why he has since deleted those tweets after they went viral. Maybe it's a mistranslation. We'll find out later this week, but for now, we do have to worry a little bit about the future of Square Enix games on Nintendo. And also with Nintendo Switch 2, Nintendo's going to really have to start pitching to them to get the bigger Final Fantasies, to get the... I don't know if they'll worry about Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest has been pretty consistent on Switch. But to get some of these bigger games, you know, even an exclusive AAA IP like, you know, they did with Forspoken and PlayStation 5, Nintendo's really going to have to, you know, 
kind of twist the knife a little bit, maybe spend a little money and get Square Enix to come support Nintendo. Now, as for all of my thoughts on all of this, guys, you know, this is a pretty insane time that we're living in. We have a Pokemon Presents coming tomorrow. We have a Nintendo Direct happening next month. We have Gamescom coming up. We have a new Mario game coming out, plus Mario RPG, a brand new Peach game, Metroid Prime 4. We have some major titles to talk about while also Nintendo's gearing up to release a brand new system. And we're going to start hearing more and more of these stories about other third-party studios that have dev kits that are planning to bring specific games over to Nintendo Switch 2 that's going to be really exciting and show that Nintendo Switch 2 has a greater potential for massive third-party games. We did a pretty good job overall on Nintendo Switch compared to, say, Wii U. Uh, maybe not Wii, but Wii U, we definitely did a much better job. We ended up getting games like Civilization over here, Doom and Wolfenstein, and potentially we might still get Doom and Wolfenstein. We don't know because our new ones haven't been announced yet, but I will just say it's a very exciting time to be a content creator in this Nintendo space, and I think it's an exciting time for Nintendo Switch owners, especially those that have owned this platform for a while. I know that this version it came out this year, but I've, I've owned a Nintendo Switch since 2017, and so while we're continuing to get some amazing support and, and great Nintendo games coming out still, for this platform, we also know Nintendo's gearing up for the next, and this is a just really exciting because I want a platform like this that's more powerful that can get those third-party games, but also help take Nintendo's games to the next level. Remember Luigi's Mansion 3? Remember that game? How amazing and incredible it was on here? What the hell do you think they're going to be able to do with a Luigi's Mansion 4, let alone a new Zelda game, 3D Mario with more unlocked power and potential? I just see Nintendo continuing to deliver the goods for decades to come at the rate that they're going. So I'm going to, for now, put all of my faith in Shintaro Furukawa, the current president and CEO of Nintendo, that he can lead Nintendo into something they've never done before. Back to back mega successful generations of platforms. Thank you guys so much for being here and I'll catch you in the next video.